Hi everyone, I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks so much for stopping by, for subscribing especially. We're a good bunch now. Thanks for connecting everyone. Um, I want to get as many people interested as possible. Of course, I found UFOs on the moon. And these UFOs are pressed up against the surface. We've seen UFOs that are a lot look a lot larger, but it's obviously because they're closer um, to Earth, or should I say, more off the moon. You know, and these objects are massive. They are many, a couple kilometers, a few kilometers long, um, a mile or two long, and I have seen one that was three to four miles long, and I'm basing that length on the size of the crater that was beside it. So I am really depending on the real size of the crater. You, you, you just see it. If you see a, a UFO the size of a crater, it's because it's pretty big. This is Sinus Iridum. Uh, we'll zoom up. I'll get an arrow up on it. Over top. Top left. It looks like a, a hat. Looks. Look, guys. See how unnatural it looks. But of course, I'm not going to lie. When you zoom in, the edge is not as straight as you would think because, of course, we're far out. And the further you get out, the more things look like symmetrical lines. That's also true. But when you start zooming in, you start seeing symmetrical uh, structures and block structures. You say to yourself, wow, you know, they're pressed up against the surface. And hey, there are a lot of them. And when you look at the objects, it's not just buildings. There are also objects on the surface. John Lear says there's an atmosphere, uh, probably about 70%, I think he said, um, on the surface of the moon. So with that quantity of oxygen atmosphere, for sure, there would be some types and or forms of vegetation. And that's what I believe. And I'm even going to show you guys um, a live view Okay, and look, these channels are awesome. What you know, whether people believe it or not, people love coming to see the video. Okay, this guy declares he's going to show us what trees look like on the surface of the moon. <laughs> oh my God, those are trees. That's what you're going to say, okay, when you see it, because it could be some type of organic vegetation. And people are saying, some people, the trolls are saying, Bruce. Why do you want the moon to be inhabited? I don't want, I couldn't care less. It doesn't change anything. They've always been there. Thousands of years. Millions of years. Okay? I believe it. And they're up there. They're doing their thing. Maybe they're protectors. If you want to communicate with them, think of them. I'm not going to go into details about how to do it. Because nobody will believe it and nobody understands it but you know what there are some people on this earth that communicate with them I'm just I'm just you know just throwing that out there I'm not insane <laughs> I haven't lost it and without being overexcited about it seems to me that it's just normal sure you know connecting with our minds you know they're here in essence, they say. You know, this is, I've heard Stephen Greer say this. Thanks for watching, everyone. When the telescope is off the edge, outer edge of the moon, everything is very white. And the more it goes towards the center, well, when the eye of the telescope hides the black watch. Now, look in Mare Serenitatis, the green like valleys that will appear. I'm also pointing to a red surface area. Now, here's the thing. The moon became very yellowish, yellowish, sorry, orangey, okay? It's incredible how it was so orange. It actually bugged me. And I'm close up now. This is a nice view, guys. Did all of you know, I know ma many of you know, but did, I mean, I'm sorry. This is the first time for myself I really take a good look at Mare Serenitatis. Are you seeing what we're seeing? There's so much detail to examine just inside of Mare Serenitatis. Nice devil face there, right? <laughs> Inside of Mare Serenitatis, you can see all of the colors, the greenery. It's popping out, out of the surface. It's incredible. The moon turned orange um, during August and really orange. And the drastic change was in minutes. It just got orange like it was a slow combusting fire or explosion that was arriving somewhere. I'm, I'm talking about the color. It was just getting more and more and more and more orange. And then it just popped back to 
uh, you know, seeing the regular grayish moon. But when you get close, those colors are natural and they really do pop out. It looks like we're looking at green valleys. Did you see what we just saw in Mare Serenitatis? I looked at it 10, 15 times. It's just beautiful. This telescope, the detail it shows in Mare Serenitatis. I mean, you have to admit it. I've never seen the surface of the moon with so many structured details, structuring details, and many 90 degree angles, by the way. So how could a species live on the moon and continuously build for thousands of years without the surface terrain changing? Well, the objects that we are seeing would be quite large and would never change, but the smaller objects on top of these large objects are changing all the time, so long we. So we're talking about the same reflectivity as a surface. Very simple explanation. Take two, take a white piece of paper, take another white piece of paper and cut it in four and place it over top of the full paper that you did not cut. Go up on your roof and you won't see the four papers, but you will see the contour of that one entire paper. If you were to take binoculars, you would see faint lines if you were would apply a light close to it or if there was a light descending on its edge representing the sun right you would see that on top of that paper now it looks like there's a bunch of lines but you don't know that there's actually four cut out papers you just see lines and this is what we're seeing on the moon as having the same reflectivity as the surface those structures are not being seen but when the line of light or you uh, play with shades tints um, shadowing uh, to be able to bring out the detail well you really see a lot of the structures appear up on the surface um, even you know that's my goal is to try to show as much of all the different um, shapes and forms on the surface it's pretty incredible how much there is and you know the more you slow it down um, the more you have a chance of seeing it not always easy. This was a very windy day, this footage, by the way. Both these areas have structures just as high as one another. In the bottom there, the bigger white arrow, well, there are as many structures as you're seeing on the outer edge there. And by the way, that's not the outer edge, it's that the line of light's there. And wherever the line of light is, it always looks like an edge of the moon. You can even see it rounded off. So, that impression that everyone has that the moon is round. I can hear lightning now. So let's talk about something for a minute. How come if it's not the edge of the moon that it looks like the edge of the moon? Explain that to me. We're going to pan up here. Okay. The moon is not full. So the line is about three quarters way across the moon. Maybe not even three quarters way. And you'll see when we get to the top here, it looks like the edge of the moon. And why do I say the edge? You will even see the what looks like a rounded shape of the moon. So if I was to tell you, well, this is the edge, outer edge of the moon, and watch as we pan up, you'd say, hell yeah, that's the edge of the moon, and that's where it veers off. But why does it look like it's veering off? That's what I don't understand. Why do the craters on the edge look like they're sitting on the top? right? But the craters down on the bottom do not. They're flat. Why are those sideways? Are you getting it? I'm noticing this. Why are we seeing the craters like they're on an eye level with a sideways? It's not the edge of the moon. Stephanie Allen, thank you so much for the generous donation. My basement was Stephen Allen. Stefan Allen. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining the community. Guys, if you have UFO videos and you own the copyrights to it, and there's some coming tomorrow, early video, send them to bruceswartz 75 a commercial gmail.com. Uh, you must own the copyrights. Please leave a short description of what went on and your name if you want one presented. Thanks a lot for the support, everyone. Welcome.